What's up, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. Got my man Jonathan Mack in the studio with me. What up? What up? What's going on? Are you good? Yeah, I'm hanging out. That's fun. It's exciting. Um, look, y'all, I wanted to talk to you. This is going to be a shorter episode. I say that, and we end up running 55 minutes, but no, legit, because I got shit I got to do. Um, this morning, things are popping off here at the offices, and um, it's a super busy day, but we wanted to make sure we got into the studio because we have a commitment to coming to you guys every week with a fresh episode. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, what I'm working on personally right now. Um, It is fat camp, y'all. We are in fat camp. And I did a post on social media, on Facebook a day or two ago. And I kind of talked about how, you know, currently, you know, like my marriage better than it's ever been, Um, you know, family wise, I feel like better than it's ever been. And again, guys, I'm telling you, like, I feel like these things are better than they've ever been. Um, Feedback from the people involved in these things with me um, aren't telling me otherwise. So I feel like it's accurate statement, you know, Jonathan. Um, But like, I feel like our team is better than it's ever been um, across the board, um, across the country. I feel like, um, you know, the businesses are going better than they've ever been. Like, these are all great things. But my health, and we've talked about it a couple of times here on the show, is it's something I joke about. You know, it's like, I'm the big dude. I'm the fat guy. I'm the whatever. And the reality is, like, the fat dude. Like, I'm not a fat guy. Like, I'm an athlete who's been freaking lazy. I, you know, that's that's who I am. That's what I am. I'm a person who who wins in most aspects of my life because I believe and I know that I'm a winner. But I am not showing that with how I prioritize, you know, my health and take care of myself. And for 40 plus years, that's always been a, a back, a back burner item. Um, and so, you know, last fall, I decided, I was like, man, forget it. This is it. Like, we're not, we're not going down this path anymore. And, um, you know, early January, I was in Dallas, you know, with my Apex people. And I, I made a commitment. I told them. I said, guys, I'm going to be under 250 pounds by July. And, you know, it's like, okay, under 250 pounds. Um, Damn, that's a lot. You're trying to be under 250. I'm like, well, mofos, look, your boy was well over 300 when I made that commitment. Um, And there's just no reason for that. There's no reason. Like, aside from my weight, I am a healthy individual. You know, there's nothing that's sidetracking me and, and, causing me to balloon up like this, except for lack of discipline and laziness. You know, I don't have some injury that keeps me from going for a walk. I don't have some freaking, um, you know, mental disorder that keeps me from choosing, you know, Chick-fil-A, 12 count nuggets, a spicy chicken, a large fry and a sweet tea, rather than, you know, cooking something healthy at home. Like it's just ease and convenience, right? And I've always allowed for, you know, the health to kind of, to take this, the side road, um, and that, oh, I can't commit time to getting healthier. Cause that's going to take away from my business. That takes up a lot of my time. Oh, if I go do that though, that's going to take away from the, the small amount of time that I have with Devin and the kids and, and all these things. And it's all bullshit. And that was the thing that I kind of put myself on blast on Facebook is that it, it is all bullshit. It's all bullshit excuses. And, you know, all the hard work we've done and, you know, the, the success we've had, the success we've lost, the, the opportunity to, to rebuild and, you know, be working towards something really special right now is all for nothing. At the end of the day, I dropped dead in a heart attack, walking out of my office, going to the car. Like, what's the damn point of it? The kids aren't going to be excited about that. My wife's not, well, maybe that insurance hits, maybe they will be, I don't know. Um, try to lessen the trauma of the passing, but at at my core, I believe they would, they would trade time with me over any certain thing or amount of money, right? They would, they would rather choose the people that love you would choose to have you versus anything item cash flow. Um, and by me disrespecting my health and not prioritizing it. I'm really disrespecting my marriage. I'm dishonoring my family. Um, I'm stealing from my business and my staff. Um, and I, I had a realization towards the end of the year, and it kind of freaked Devin out a little bit, 
or I told her, and I don't think I've said this on, on the show in the last month or so, but I really believe Jonathan, you know, I'm operating. When I came to this decision, I believe that I was operating at about 40% of my potential. And I think if you ask people that think they know me or are around me or see what we're doing and how we operate, they would be surprised by that statement. And I don't mean that arrogantly, right? Like everybody has different capacities. Everybody has different capabilities. Everybody is passionate about different things. But I think about how I feel physically and like my energy levels and I'm tired and, you know, and all these things. I was like, shit, I think at best I'm operating at 40% of my potential. Yeah. I mean, when I was at UVA and I decided to like leave, take it a yeah. year or two off, um, they said, we want you here, not just surviving. We want you here thriving. Right. So if you're not thriving and you're just surviving and you're just getting along at right. what, 40, 50 percent, like take some time, yeah. reevaluate, come back. Yeah. And so when I made that realization and that's great, right? Like that's that's important. And, you know, I was like, OK, business is going great. Got a solid team. They're executing. I need to adjust my schedule to where I can make sure I prioritize my health. I'm going to get selfish with it because in turn, I start thinking about, okay, if I actually believe I'm operating at 40% of my potential, where would we be if I hadn't been sandbagging for the last 10 years? Like, where would we be? What would my relationship be like with Devin? What would my relationship be like with my kids? Where would we be at as a business? How much better of a leader would I be? Um, how much better of a friend would I be if I was actually firing at 80% of my potential? I mean, it's a 100% increase. You know, and right now, like, I'm feeling good. Weight's coming off. My energy's off the charts. Um, I'm freaking lifting and running. You know, it started out just walking. Now I'm lifting. Now I'm running. Um and I don't need to be doing this, but I'm doing them like back to back. Like it's, I'm going from one workout to the next and I'm wrecked, but I'm feeling great. I'm not waking up. Like my body's not devastated. Um, you know, we're just doing work and it's, it, I'm like, shit, I think right now I'm at about 52%. <laughs> All right. There's so much work to still go, but I'm like, man, what will we be able to accomplish? Because at the end of the day, like, I want to be known as the greatest, like the greatest to do it. And that's not, I'm not saying I need to be known as the greatest dog trainer. I don't be, want to be known or need to be known as the greatest businessman ever. I don't need to be known as the greatest, you know, father ever, you know, all those things. I'm not saying that. But what I damn near want people to remember, and I want there to be no doubt about, is that I was the greatest version of me that I could possibly be. That's the, what I mean by the greatest. And every one of you listening, there's areas of your lives, just like me, that you ignore. And, you know, we've touched on this lightly on previous episodes, but I'm going a little deeper right now, and I'm talking about me personally, um, where you're lacking. And it, it's, you can be, and the people that love you and care about you deserve the greatest version of you, wherever you're skipping out and wherever you're kind of cheating at. And, you know, and damn it, forget everybody else. Forget your spouse, forget your significant other, forget your kids for a minute. Be selfish and for yourself, be the greatest. Like you got to be here. Why, why coast? Why, why sandbag? Why play down? to the people around you because you're scared of how they're going to feel about you as you level up. If they can't handle the greatest version of you, they're not, they're not for you. They're not your people. They're not, it, it, you're focusing on the wrong thing. And for me, I think I've just allowed to, and maybe it's just me. I don't know. And at the end of the day, that's what matters because anybody else's opinion or definition of me or perception of me doesn't impact me. But I've defined myself as a really hard worker and the funny fat guy. And if I'm being honest, I hate the funny fat guy. I hate him. He drives me 
crazy. It drives me nuts. He kept me out of pools with my kids when they were younger. You know what I mean? They, they, he kept me from going and jumping at the you know trampoline places. Kept me from wanting to go on the roller coasters with them when they were younger. Like, I hate that dude. Because he took things from me. And then as I started to get a little bit deeper into it, it's like, he didn't take shit from me. I allowed him to. And in my life, I don't allow anybody to do shit to me. But I allowed funny fat guy to take a lot. So he can f- off. Like, we, we, we are done. When I, when I realize that this has impacted a lot more than me just being lazy and allowing those things to happen, you know, with my health, and I realize that across the board where there's areas where I think I'm excelling and I'm sandbagging, no. Nah. Like, I'm ripping everybody off. And I don't, I don't do that. That's not what I'm about. I want there to be no doubt when it's all said and done and I leave this earth that I was the greatest. And I was the greatest dad that I could have possibly been. I was the greatest husband to Devin. I was the greatest leader to my businesses and my people. I was the greatest friend I could possibly be. Like, that, that's what it is. I don't need to be the greatest dog trainer. I hope. I pray to God one day we have hundreds of trainers on our team and I'm the worst one. I want to be the worst on my team because we're freaking killing it if I'm the worst on the team. I don't need to be the greatest. I don't need to run around beating my chest and all that, but I got to be the greatest of me that I can be for the stuff that matters. And I think everybody needs to kind of reevaluate and say, hey, where, and have honest conversation with yourself. Where are you cheating yourself at? Where are you, you, you leaving stuff on the table? And what you'll find out is like me, I thought it was just one area. I thought I was just letting shit slide with my health, but the reality is it impacts everything. So we're fixing it. We're fixing it. And, um, you know, I don't know how to fix it. I struggled, I've struggled and battled with, you know, uh, fat Josh, you know, suppressing athlete Josh for a long time. And, you know, I've yo-yoed you know, and all those things. And now in my forties, it's starting to freak me out a little bit. I'm like, oh shit, you gotta start having different types of health exams and tests and checkups. And more often I'm like, oh Lord, if I mess this up, I find myself checking my blood pressure more often and heart rate and yeah. you know, EKGs and, and all these things. And you know, the thing is I'm very fortunate. All these things are boom, perfect. Lungs are strong. Heart is strong. Everything's good. Blood pressure is great. But if I continue to keep this weight on, the the reality is all that will start to change. And isn't it funny? Because I went to the doctors yesterday for uh, some post COVID like breathing mm-hmm. stuff. And isn't it funny how when you feel like there's something wrong and you feel like there's something that you need to work at, like you could have a doctor tell you everything's good and you could still be like, I feel like I still need to work on some things. Yeah, because I know I'm right. Like they're telling me, hey, things check out, but you need to get some weight off. Here's the thing. They've been telling me that shit for years. Exactly. Like I had to make the decision that we got to go. And I needed to bring in a coach to help me put a plan together. Because when you're young and arrogant and, you know, all this shit, you're like, oh, I'll just do it. Yeah, I've done it often. I, I've freaking lost and gained probably more people in my, like human beings in my life added up. About to say, tell me about it. The most people, you know, and it's like, I needed to bring in somebody that can help me build something sustainable that I can do. So I brought in Mark Z and he's tremendous and he's helped me build out a plan and he's tracking my stuff and holding me accountable. And, you know, we're going after the same, like the business, we reverse engineered it just like I do my goals with business. This is the weight. This is where I want to be. All right. I got this commitment. I will be under 250 by July. What does that look like on a daily basis? And I'm just attacking the day, just like I do everything else. Just like we talk about on this show, win the day, those small wins, right? And they add up. Well, now I just got to start prioritizing this and doing it. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're, you know, two months into this thing and making great progress. 280s hype as shit feels great you know and um so i know 270 is gonna feel great and 260s and 250s i mean here's the crazy thing jonathan i don't know if you remember this because you were a lot younger 
But in like 2010, 2011, I was running like 50 Ks and marathons at like 238. Like that's how good I felt at 238. That's why, like, that's a big dude to be running those types of yeah. distances. Like I'm not built for running. Okay. But the obsessive part of me gets it. And it's like, I can always, it's something that I literally can make myself do better. Yeah. You do have the mentality of one of those people that wakes up and says like runners high. I don't believe in runners highs. Yeah. I don't know that it's a, I don't know that it's a runner's high, but I'm like, oh yeah, I could run 30 miles in the mountains today. Yeah. yeah. Why not? I mean, okay, mind over matter. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to go do it. Now, as I'm carted off the mountain in the back of a John Deere Gator, because my arms have swelled up, my body's just like, bro. About we, to say, once we, you're being airlifted. We told, we told you 15 miles ago, this ain't for you, son. Like, you got to calm down. But it's, you know, they always say your mind quits before your body. Um, I have been in several scenarios uh, in the past where, where that was not the case. Um, and And that's where, again, pisses me off that I have allowed myself to get to this point um but it is that obsessiveness like my obsessiveness and focus has been so much on the bit and it's not an excuse it's just it allowed myself to justify ignoring other things yeah and i catch myself in a hot mess right so now we address it and guess what we're addressing it business isn't falling off like it's my my marriage i'm like oh my gosh my family still loves me and, you and know, that, that I feel like is the biggest obstacle, because when people say that they want to go through one of these like life changing kind of uh, moments, like they want to change something about themselves, yeah. they get real worked up about like starting again, starting over. Yeah. And the process that it takes and what might be lost when you do that. And one of the best pieces of advice that I heard was if you're getting tired of starting over, then just stop giving up. Maybe adjust, oh, dude, that's deep. Like adjust your adjust your pace. Yeah, um, you need to make sure that ends up being one of the shorts for reels and stuff uh, because that's solid. Oh yeah, I, quote from a rapper. Yeah, that's right. Hey, young, shocking, right? Oh no, Young Thug, <laughs> rapper before me, prophet. But that's that's so legit and it's so true. Um, and that's the thing, and and that's where it's like you've got to to start thinking about it and realize because whatever it is like in your life where you you're dropping the ball. It's not a shocker to you. You know it, you see it and you think about it every single day. Something's going to happen that you're just fed up and you're done with it. And all the reasons that you justified to yourself of why you can ignore it, why you can fail, why you can drop the ball, you know, those things will not matter anymore. You think about it every day. This is not hidden from you. It's right in front of you. It causes you anxiety daily. It makes you feel less, you know, good about yourself daily. And I'm not just talking about health and fitness and, and one's weight. I mean, this could be um, their marriage. This could be, you know, dating relationships. This could be a relationship with your children. This could be expectations that you know you're sandbagging at work and underperforming because um, you think no one's noticing and can just skate by. Like, here's the thing everybody notices I'm a lazy fat ass. Like I can say what I want about myself, but the reality is when I roll in someplace over 300 pounds, I'm a lazy fat ass. That's it. Like doesn't hurt my feelings. And that's what people should see. They shouldn't see a champion because I'm not presenting myself as a champion, but damn it. I am, but I need to, to make some changes. You know, because I'm letting the wins in other areas justify losing big time in another. And that's where you can't cheat yourself. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, you and I both know, like, the circumstances that led to me leaving UVA, and I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll address them at some point on yeah. here uh, when we feel like having a long conversation. <laughs> but um, I was justifying having decent grades and let like oh i have i have a decent grades at uh top university like i might as well just fall off the wagon just start doing poorly in all other areas of my life and it's okay because i have a yep. i have a decent gpa it's all yep. good like if my parents call and ask like how's school going i can tell them it's good yeah, I'm if anybody it. asks it's like i'm doing great at uva but the rest of my life is falling apart yep um 
you will definitely justify your struggles uh, yeah. and things that you're allowing to happen to yourself. You'll find a way to do it. It's like being that f- quote unquote funny fat guy. It's like, yeah. hey, I'm funny. I use this to my advantage in yeah. terms of humor. So I'm not struggling with anything. I'm doing right. It right. But as soon as like that light gets turned off, you know, it's like shit. Like n- there ain't nobody feeling good about themselves running around who's unhealthy. Like I don't care. Like it. Talk about. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of messed up. God, I hope I don't hurt nobody. Well, I mean, it's whatever. It's what it is. There's a lot of this stuff where it's like body image and like being confident in who you are and loving who you are as you are and all those things. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Like it, being a person that is, has had success in life is well loved by their family and cared for and, you know, and, and, and has a good community around them and people investing in me. Yeah, knowing I'm fat and I don't do shit about it, I do not feel good about that. And I find it very hard to believe that anybody that is in that situation that actually does have the ability to do something about it, I find it complete bullshit to say or hype them up like, you're beautiful how you are. Yes, you are a beautiful person, but let's agree. I'm I'm a beautiful human being, but I am lazy and I am fat and there is shit I need to do about it. And there is no medical reason that I should be this way. I think that, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, and I'm not trying to body shame anybody. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm the king of fat and unhealthy. But see, that's the thing is I feel like we get uh, a lot of this is semantics. You know, it's like the words mm-hmm. and such involved with it. It's like, we see body positivity and you see somebody who may or may not be larger on the weight spectrum. You think, what is there to be positive about? They must be struggling with so many things. Um, and I think that it's important People should love themselves and such, but 100%. we shouldn't necessarily like being positive about one's body and self image and having self love is different than like loving your body and yeah. claiming for it to be healthy. I don't know. I'm yeah. not one to be able to speak on anybody's <laughs> weight, you know? No, right. But, but my thing is, it's like, don't kid yourself that, yeah, I love me. I'm an arrogant son of a bitch. Like, I, I, <laughs> I love me. I love my life. Things like that. But that that's not, but if I really love me, if I really love me, I want to be able to love me for a long time. And that means I got to prioritize my health. I got to change bad habits. Yeah. I can't, I can't order two combos from Chick-fil-A every time DoorDash brings it. That's how lazy it's gotten. I don't, I probably haven't even been to Chick-fil-A in a year, but they'll bring it to me. I don't even have the effort to walk to the car. Like, give me a damn, like it's, it's wild. And that's where it's like, Hey, yes, you can have, you should have self love. You should be a confident person. Um, but a part of that is calling yourself on your bullshit and realizing, okay, yeah. If I, if I really do love myself, why am I killing myself? And that's literally what I've been doing. That, that that's it. And that's the bottom line. And, you know, some people are gonna hear this and not like that. And, and I'm not sorry. It's I'm sharing with you what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with. And I very much believe that there's a lot of people that'll be listening to this, that in some area of their life will agree and be able to apply it. So, so here's the thing guys, um, for me, this is going to be a process and this is going to be a really long process. And I want to believe that if I carry my discipline over from my businesses and and from how I invest and prioritize my wife and my kids, that I'm going to be able to apply that same discipline now that I'm prioritizing this to get myself where I want to be. Not just, okay, I ate a salad for three days this week instead of 50 chicken nuggets. Um, You know, but I like I've made this commitment to people that I care about. And I didn't say I'm going to try to be. I said that I will be under that 250. So now I'm saying to all of you guys listening as well, by July, I'm going to be under 250. And that's just phase one. Okay, that's the first step. When I get under 250, my coach and I, we're going to reevaluate. And we're like, all right, what are the next steps? What do we need to do? How are you feeling? What's working? What's not? Because in my mind, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be 195 pounds. I'm going to lose well over 100 pounds, be 195. I'll tell you right now, I graduated high school, I was 215, played football, played soccer. Like I was, I was in good shape. I look at pictures of me now at 215. I was like, yo, am I dying or something? 
Like I, I see this picture, like you do not look healthy. I, I was small. So I don't know. I might get to 225 and be really damn happy with how I look, how I feel. I, who the hell no? I may be cut up. I mean, yeah, I don't I mean, know. We get a we get accustomed <laughs> to certain things. It's like people will would have told me when I was going through like my whole spiral, they would yeah. say, Oh, well, you look so much happier then. It's like, well, yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right. And so it's like, you know, I don't know what that phase two is gonna look like. And if I worry about what phase two looks like, I will never um beat phase one. So all I'm focused on is the day to day. So we're, we've created a group, uh, started a group on Facebook, um, and it's it's accountability. All right, I've got friends in there, I've got strangers in there. There's business people in there. There's um, stay at home moms in there, uh, stay at home dads. Uh, there's heavy people. There's really fit people. Um, my coach Mark, he's going to be in there dropping some advice and insight for people. And this isn't a place you to come in with your business and and pitch us on bullshit. We're not selling anything. This is a a, a room for accountability. And whether it's stuff you need help with as far as business goes, relationships, you know, a health journey that you're on, um, it's just, it's that. And I'm being, you know, part of it's selfish. I want to create a community that I can put my shit out there with who's vested and wants to, you know, help hold me accountable. And in turn, I want to do the same for you. Um, and so if you're interested in getting into that group and being a part of that, you can shoot us a DM, um, shoot me a DM on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, and I'll send you an invite. Um, and you know, we'll get you in there. And uh, the thing I just wanted to tell you today is figure out where you're lacking. You already know where it is because it causes you stress and tension every single day. You don't need to have all the answers of how you're going to address it. You just need to start addressing it, all right? You got to start focusing on it so that you can become the greatest. I'm working on becoming the greatest, and it's the greatest version of me. You need to focus on where you're lacking so you become the greatest version of yourself. It matters. It's important. When it's all said and done, I'm going to leave no doubt that I was the greatest. So shoot us a DM. I'll get you in the group. We'll hold you accountable, and you are going to see the greatest version of me as time progresses. I guarantee you with that, and I'm going to get better on this show. I'm going to be better with my family. I'm going to be a better leader. Physically, I'm going to be better. I will leave no doubt that I'm the greatest. We love you. Share the podcast if it's helpful for you. We'll see you next time.